All police! Come to the door. You come to no harm. Shots fired. Crime never sleeps. Taser, I think. But neither... Stand still! ..do the cops. <laughs> Battling on the front line... Taser! Taser! ..are Nottinghamshire's finest. Stop by for impact. Highly trained pursuit drivers... <laughs> ..specialists in entry... Go, 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 go. ..and search... Four ounces of cannabis. Rapid response firearms officers... On police! Show yourself now! Please, for your dog stop, stop! And the crime-stopping force... Ah, look at my arm! Ah. ..of the dog unit. Ah. Get down on the floor! Ah. Wherever the battle takes them, they'll never back down. Ah. Because come at the hour... Yeah, Bass, we've still got him. Up at the back wheel, off side of the road. Doing, 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 doing. Come at the interceptors. Where are you from? Leeds. Leeds. Don't come to Nottingham again, will you? Coming up. Nine, 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 activated. A sinister late night encounter. We've got a male walking down the middle of the road who's carrying what appears to be a knife or a weapon. He's gone over the island, over the grass. A wild and whipless white van man. He's losing control at the minute, he's losing control. And left, left, left and time would have you. One man's bid for freedom takes a nosedive. Saturday night in the city centre. Get in a room. Oh, we'll love it. Most are letting off steam, but interceptors Rob Ely and Spencer Pugh have got their minds firmly on the job. Another pair and all at it. Come on, people. Aside from the usual weekend shenanigans, there's nothing to see here. I've got a vehicle that's speed on Barley. He's just gone through a red light. All right. It sounds like the real action's kicking off on the other side of town. Gone through a red light. He's crashing. He's crashing. Crashed. He's crashing. He's crashing. He's crashed. Our dog officer's just had a bit of a uh, fail to stop with a vehicle who's uh, gone through a red light, nearly crashed into her. She's gone after him. Four miles away, interceptor Jen Else from the dog unit is behind a white van. Why it failed to stop is anyone's guess, but he's clocking twice the speed limit and wreaking all sorts of havoc. That's very lame, speed 6 no risk, no traffic, no party down. For now, Jen's the only one on his tail. 6 got me lights on, that's nothing. This is dog van versus white van man. A recent rain shower means the roads are wet, but the reckless driver clearly isn't a risk assessment kind of guy. To him, the roundabout up ahead is merely optional. He's gone over the island, over the grass. As he launches himself into the junction, an innocent motorist is nearly caught in the crossfire. Neither shaken nor stirred by his near miss, the van man puts his foot down, rapidly reaching motorway speeds. Beat shell road, continue on beat shell road. Speed is eight zero. Risk is low. No vehicles on the road, no pedestrians. He's gunning it through a residential area at four times the speed limit. But these streets aren't built for these speeds, and he's about to find out why. He's losing control at the minute, he's losing control. Stand by, speed 4 zero. At north of 60, the suspect spies another roundabout up ahead. He slams on the brakes, loses control, and finds himself on the central reservation. Speed 
After his bloody nose, Jen reckons this featherweight could be throwing in the towel. Well, in fact, he's just taking a breather before round two. Yes, yes, we're from left to left onto Western Boulevard. A local unit has now rocked up and it quickly falls in behind Jen. I've got cars ahead, this is medium, that goes through the red lightning. White's van man's response is to come out fighting, blasting across a major junction without a second thought for other road users. It's left, left, left. We are at the lane. Left, left. Fortunately, a third unit has now caught up. Jen, we're right behind you now. Good, stay safe. So Jen steps aside and lets interceptor Ian Coleman's X5 assume pole position. Zulu 5, advanced vehicle, deep back and finger train. And now, bringing up the rear are Rob and Spence. Get out of the way, team. That man may be outnumbered, but he refuses to be outmaneuvered. You get the unit to the top with one stone please. Cops need to formulate a takedown, but it won't be easy. The road conditions are a bit too narrow to do a get by on him. A box on these roads isn't an option. But there are always alternatives. Five one two, I'm on a one road with Stinger. There's a Stinger crew nearby, but it might not be needed. I think he just lost the tire actually front near side. We have we have lost the tire. He's on three wheels. He may be on three wheels, but this Dell boy's no joke, and his actions are increasingly rash. Just playing the junction with Harwell Crescent, but no other vehicle. Because of the narrow streets and damp conditions, Ian holds back. But having lost sight of his man, he's got a big decision to make. Left, right, or dead ahead, it's time to place your bets. Control at the minute, losing control. Stand by, speed four zero. In Nottingham, cops have been hot on the heels of a runaway white van that's been clipping curbs and running reds all over town. Just playing the junction with Harwell Crescent, but no other vehicles. Having given the reckless motor some space, Ian Coleman suddenly got a big call to make. Well, the camp lost at the junction. Fortunately, Rob and Spence have arrived in the nick of time. We're going to take the straight on. You got a bit left and right. Now they've got all bases covered. Rob swings right. It's through, still on, forward crescent. Um... But no dice. Now it's not it. Meanwhile, Ian's gamble isn't looking too promising either. We're just making ground. We've had to slow down for the speed bumps. Yeah, it's camp lost at this time. But as he rounds a bend... Crash, 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 uh, junction of Harwell Crescent. He's running, he's running. Ian's quick to pounce. Give your dog priority. Also on the scene are Jen and police dog Quantum. He's running back down towards you. Four legs are always better than two. We've got him. We've got him. Sorry, you say you've got him? Yes, I had a nibble on him, but he's all right. By the time Rob and Spence arrive, the man who led four police units on a senseless crosstown pursuit is thankfully in cuffs. But why he behaved so recklessly is still unclear. At this moment in time, the driver's been locked up for dangerous driving and failed to stop for police and also failing to provide a specimen of a breath. Uh, basically, just wanted to see if he was under the drink, but um, he's refused to blow 
So um, at the moment, that's what he's been arrested for, those three things. Potentially other offences once this car's about a, a good once over. He looks like he's a plumber. Come dangerous a... driver, yeah. fell well. to stop her. The car needs more than a once over. This banger needs some serious TLC. So while the driver's shipped off to the Nick, his motor will be hauled off to the nearest mechanic. Unfortunately, because it's lost a wheel, we can't drive it, so one of our recovery agents will come and recover it. He's got a towing iron, look. He knew what was coming. He's got a towing iron, so I thought, I'll put it on, so Cox can drag me away. Yeah. He, knew, <laughs> he knew what was going to happen, didn't he? Bless him, at least he thought about us. If only he'd thought about everyone else on the road. Back at the Nick, he gave a sample of breath and was found to be almost two and a half times the legal limit. For the combined offences of drink driving and dangerous driving, he was banned for three years and received more than £800 in fines. A handy, lightweight piece of kit that packs 50,000 volts. Switch off the taser! Get on the floor! Get your hands on the In less than 10 years of active service... Get your hands on the railing! Do as you're told! Lads, you're going to get a taser, just stop! Get on the floor! Get on the floor now! The taser has sent shockwaves through law enforcement. Taser, taser, taser! He's got a knife on him. I think the taser is very effective because just having it there and people seeing the bright yellow is enough as a, of a deterrent in itself. Right. Go to my colleague. Go to my colleague. Yeah, mate, I'm And then pointing it at someone, if they are being violent, they've got a weapon in their hands, a lot of the times is enough to actually de-escalate and bring the situation to a resolve. So it's very rarely fired. Keep your hands up on the floor! It's late on a Sunday night. Interceptors James McClintock and Dan Butler are in the unmarked car on their way back to the Nick. Oh. When a figure emerges from the darkness. Nine, 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 activated. It's an unsettling sight and a precarious situation. Just back off a minute, what's he got? The man has pulled something from his waistband. We need some assistance, please, on uh, Hucknall Road. We've got a male walking down the middle of the road is carrying what appears to be a knife or a weapon. He's uh, challenging us on Hucknall Road. Um... The boys don't know who he is or what he's capable of. Yeah, he's walking down the road. We're in an unmarked car, so I think he was trying to do a carjacking. Their next move has to be decisive. Just get out and uh, taser, I think. Taser-trained Dan's been on the force for two decades. He's a keen runner who's always quick off the mark. Stand still, police with a taser. Turn around, turn around. Put your hands in the small of your back. Maka, can you cuff him? Taser's going away. Yeah. Get down onto your knees. Get down onto your knees. Yes, Put your hands behind your head. Yes, Coming in to cuff you now. Yes, a robust response and a pair of tasers has had the desired effect. You're the boss, sir. You're the boss, sir. Subject secure. Subject secure. Stand up for me. The man is compliant and even polite, but remains in an agitated state. What's your name, buddy? But no weapons, no shots on me, officer. Yeah, I'm just searching no you, buddy. No shots on me, sir. No shots on me, sir. Just going to look into your waistband, mate. No shot, no shots on me. All right. No shots on me. Stay calm, mate. I, I, Stay no, calm. I am. I'm, I'm cool as a cucumber. Cool as a cucumber. Cool. What's your name, then? Fortunately, aside from the long stick he tossed to the ground, he's unarmed. Right, come and take a seat in the back of this van for us, pal. You're going to put me in the dog wagon? You're not going to put me dog wagon, are you? Yeah, there's no dog in there, mate. No, no dog wagon, are you? No, 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 no. Just, it's a nice, so, nice, clean van. No come dog wagon, is it? The primary concern now is for his mental well-being. Just take a seat in there, buddy. All right, no problem. And then we'll, uh, we'll find out no what's going to happen. How long have you been out for tonight, walking around? Well, I'm institutionalised, you see. I should be living in a mental institution. 
OK. Police owe a duty of care to anyone they've apprehended. And although this chap was wandering the streets with a potentially harmful weapon, it's clear he needs medical assistance. We'll get you some support at the police station tonight, OK? All right, sir. OK, you're happy right, with that? Yes, all right, sir. OK, OK, you don't yes, have to... Yes, sir. OK, no problem at all. Yes, sir. The man's been arrested for a public order offence and he's off to the Nick, where he'll receive a mental health assessment from the nurse. Dan and James are just relieved he's out of harm's way. My first impressions were, until he actually dropped it, I thought that was a nine. Yeah. The headlights were shining on it, weren't they? It was a bit... Yeah, it was just all surreal. Red dot worked straight away, didn't it? As soon as we both drew, he dropped the piece of wood without even being instructed. He just went into full compliant mode. It was almost like a training scenario that we do. It was weird. The man was charged with a Section 4 public order offence, which includes threatening behaviour and intending to provoke fear or violence. He received a total of £159 in fines. In knots, cops encounter all sorts of dangerous weapons, often relying on intel to get the most harmful off the streets. On the Friday late shift, interceptors are well accustomed to dealing with their most testing jobs. And tonight is no exception. Cole has only seen the flick knife tonight, but knows that there's axes and machetes in the property. Darren Chalk and Rich Elliott have just been alerted to an incident in a small town on the edge of the county. It's now saying it's a multicoloured knuckle duster with a flick bit on it. District cops have received intel that a man has been seen brandishing a knuckle duster. So we're just going to travel there now to support local officers. Um, there is a taser authority in place. So we'll see if we can assist them in uh, locating this mail and make sure that everyone at that address is safe. Since July 2021, it's been illegal to own certain bladed weapons, including knuckle dusters, even if they never leave your home. Tonight, the boys must proceed with extreme caution. You always go in considering, you know, your contingencies, what, what could happen, is he going to fight, is he going to try and run, and then obviously we'll box those off and try and deal with him as safe as we can. Before becoming a top firearms cop, book lover Rich used to work in intelligence. He's well read and ready for anything. This evening, he's got taser authority. Fox of 2x86. When they get to the address, local cops are already there. And having acquired a key to the block's main entrance, they set off to find their man. The lights are on. It's police. But is anyone home? You just come and talk to me in the door, chap. All I want to do is find out what's happened from your perspective. Rich reckons he's seen something. Contact at the front door. He is in the property, we can see shadows moving, but he's not coming to the front door. But for the interceptors, a locked door isn't an obstacle as much as a challenge. And where there's a will, there's definitely a way. They're saying that they can see movement inside the flat. If we're establishing that there's been some offence, then we might need to go in and get him and arrest him. And if he's not answering the door, then we'll, uh, we'll use our key. Forcing entry may only be half the battle. Intel suggests this bloke's packing some serious weaponry. Come to the door, mate. We do need to talk to you. If you don't come to the door and open it, we are going to have to force it, OK? What's more, police have no idea how many people might be in there. Last chance. But with reports of deadly weapons... Okay, ready? ..there's no time for ifs or buts. Despite Rich's suspicions, there's no one here. But the intel was on the money. As you can see, it's a machete. 
We had intelligence that this man had access to machetes and kept them by his bed. And sure enough, that's where it was. Potentially there'd be other weapons, he won't just have one. There's no flies on Shorky. A knife has just been found in the lounge. And now Rich has struck on something in the loft. There's an axe. Yeah. A trio of pretty nasty tools. Or oh, hatchet. But while the team continue the search, Chalky's just heard footsteps outside. He... No. This bloke fits the description of the suspect. He... What? What's that? Are you? No. The pair are clearly startled. After all, it's not every day you arrive home to a house full of interceptors. Going off here, bro. This is unreal. This is unreal. What? Going off. Listen, mate, I'm asking you to be quiet. Listen, I don't understand what is going on. Simple question, is your name? No, I'm taking my coat off because if you think you are taking my mother. Listen, he's not nowhere. The woman's erratic behaviour is giving cause for concern. What's going on? What have you done to my husband? What have you done? What's going on? Yeah, it's bad, I don't know what's going on. Meanwhile, the bloke she's with has finally fessed up to being the suspect they're after. We've had a report. From what? We've had a report there's been an incident early on. Right now, just making sure everyone's safe, OK? Yeah. And I think we're going to need to talk to you in due course about what's gone off here early tonight. All right, chap? Babe, I love you. It's all right. I've not been arrested yet. Not yet. Not yet. A quick frisk reveals the man to be unarmed. Whose coat's this, this black coat? But Rich wants to know why the woman was so keen to ditch her coat. <laughs> Stashed in the pocket, a spiked knuckle duster. Is that yours? Yes, that knuckle duster is mine. And what are you doing with that? I carry it because I like the way it looks, but obviously if I just so happened, if a gentleman grabbed me from behind and I just so happened to have it in my hand looking at him, and it's Stop not catching me. So I found in the black coat that belongs to the female, spiked knuckle duster, these all were in a possession, but sometimes people aren't always straight with us and want to cover their partners for whatever reasons. Police need to get to the bottom of what's really gone down. So the bloke will be questioned at the nick. Here, give us a tenner for taxi back. In the meantime, with the weapon seized, Rich offers a few friendly words of advice. I know what he's telling us. I know why people tell us that. But at the end of the day, the only way we can safeguard it is if you tell us what's gone off. Mm. Okay, so have a think about it. Yeah. I know it's all a bit sudden. All right, but are you sure you're okay here until yeah. the council come out? Yeah, no yeah, one else is, no one else is a threat to you, no one else is. No, 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 no. The woman insists she's safe at home. So, after an evening of twists and turns, it's time for the team to pack up and leave. She's come back and she doesn't want him to be arrested. However, we've got machete, we've got large knives, we've got a spiky knuckle duster that's quite distinct. He's now being arrested, so I'm quite happy that she's been safeguarded for tonight. No charges were brought against the man, either for a fray or for possession of a weapon in a private place. Nor was any action taken against the woman. However, the knuckle duster was later destroyed. Still to come. The bike. What goes up must come down. And... Yeah, you've been drinking? No. Oh. Well, watch it. Jen senses someone might be telling porkies. Just hold up to the back of the van. They don't want you falling over and cracking your head open. Nottinghamshire police receive around 170,999 calls a year. For the most serious incidents, the average unit response time is just nine minutes. It's the early hours. On a residential street, CCTV captures a man walking. Soon after, there's an unmistakable glow. The car is on fire. As smoke billows from the vehicle, two people can be seen hurrying from an adjacent property before getting into the first car and driving off. 
Hello. Hello. My, my ex-partner came out and was really angry. He tried to take the kids and I, I ran out of the house. Okay, just listen to me. Is it your car that's on fire? Yeah, yeah. It's my car. The office is on the way to you and Tyra will come in as well. Within eight minutes of the call... The police are here now. The police are here now. A unit has arrived on the scene. So, armed with the details of the car that drove off, attention now turns to its whereabouts. Oscar Romeo 6, they've just gone past us, Coppers Road. The Mercedes A-Class has been spotted less than two miles from the scene of the crime. Which direction? It's not long before three cop cars are on its tail. Leading the pursuit, interceptor Dan Machin. Right, 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 and two, look to your road. Read it, or there are meeting yet. It's time for Dan to weigh up his options. Keep your VRA, please, your pursuit's currently authorised. Thank you. This backstreet boy certainly knows his way around town. This is a right right, followed by a further right right, it's Saint Well Avenue. But cops can't risk letting him get away. His Merc's packing 300 brake horsepower. Left, 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 on two beach road. Dan's Beamer, just 280. Can we get a Stinger to high back road, please? A Stinger could help tip the balance. Subject, please, left, 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 get in, Kilbourne Road. But the motor's just slipped into a cul-de-sac. Dan, I think there's some tank traps at the end of this road. Unless he fancies going off-road, there's no way through. Yeah, subject is over the tank trap. The rest of football is zero. Having jumped the kerb, the suspect puts his boot down. Search for a road again. Well, the cops know something he doesn't. It's the dead. They're five zero. Left, left, left on two. Hawthorne present. He's heading into yet another dead end. Either he's lost, under the influence, or he's got something else up his sleeve. Left, left, left onto Pinewood Avenue. It looks like it's the latter. The Let's just hope he doesn't try any funny business. As escape attempts go, it's hardly Harry Houdini. Right, it's fighting with his age, Pinewood Avenue, officers to us. He can fight all he likes. You've got taser authorised. But it's three against one. One in cuff. The driver is secure, but battle scarred. Subject has a quite a clear broken right hand cut. Even he's ambling. His bizarre fall has left him in need of medical attention. While they wait for the ambulance... I'm sure they're coming as quick as they can. <laughs> his motor gets a sweep. Weed. Oh, oh, there's a load of uh, cannabis in there. A bin full of weed and a bag full of readies. We had a load of cash. And that's not all. Is that false plates in there as well? Could be, mate. That link. <laughs> A pair of suspected fake number plates completes the set. All right, mate, I'm just going to caution you so you do not have to say anything. It may harm defence, so you're not mentioned when questions up to your later line in court. Anything you do say may be given evidence. Yeah, I get it. All right. But at the moment, getting nicked is the least of this bloke's worries. You're not feeling sick or dizzy or anything like that? You're not struggling to breathe or anything? I'm feeling sick. I might never see my kids again because of this shit. <laughs> because of this shit. The events of the evening have finally caught up with him. <laughs> Anything other than a kid about has been taken away. However, despite feeling sorry for himself, the man doesn't appear to be sorry for what he's done. 
Do you want a statement? A statement is f you. Actually, statement. The man was taken to hospital and treated for a broken ankle. But he did have his day in court where he pleaded guilty to dangerous driving, possession with intent to supply cannabis, and failing to provide a sample for a drugs and alcohol test. He got a 12 month suspended prison sentence and was banned from the road for four years. No further action was taken for the suspected arson or fake number plates. Have you had a drink at all tonight, mate? Yeah, I've had one. I've had one. Drink driving accounts for more than 200 deaths on UK roads every year. I'm arresting your suspicion of driving whilst over the prescribed alcohol limit. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Stop, thank you. The legal limit is 35, you've blown 59. For the interceptors, it remains one of the most senseless and selfish offences they encounter. And that's a fail, you've blown 93, OK? Drink driving is a nightmare. I think, personally, a lot of the time people do it because they can't be bothered to arrange alternative transport to get home. People think, oh, I'll just risk it, I'll risk it, I'll have a few. But then when you're out with your mates, you have a few more, and then before you know it, you're in a world of drunkness and you still think you're all right to drive home. Mate, right, you've blown 106. 106, mate, yes, yeah, so I'm arrested. The whole taboo of drink driving it just doesn't feature on some people's radars just until that one occasion when it all goes wrong. It's the Thursday night shift. Dog handler Jen Els has just spotted a builder's van veering across the carriageway. There's lots of neat drivers on there. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to go code one with it. I think it's going towards the boots, which I think is a dead end, isn't it? Quick burst of the blues appears to go unnoticed. So Jen brings in the horn section. And the driver finally gets the message. Dog handler Jen used to be a full-time gardener, and now she's got little time for bad guys cropping up on her patch. Only time will tell if this chap needs cutting down to size. Hello. You were all over the road? Yeah. Yeah, you've been drinking? No. Oh, why were you all over the road? Yeah, it's just it's a new vehicle. Right, you smell like you smell of alcohol. Just turn Do the I... uh, yeah, just turn the engine off. Have you had a drink? Have you had a drink? Yeah. Yeah. How much you had? Too much. Where are you oh. heading at the minute? Where are you oh. heading at the minute? Where are you heading at the minute? Beeston. Beeston. Have you had too much to drink? Have you had too much to drink? No, no, I've had too much. I've had a swallow. Right. Can you just pass me them keys, please? Is that all right? The driver is hard of hearing, but readily admits he's been at the bottle. Just hang on there for me, mate. It stinks of alcohol, basically. He's going to be pissed. Jen needs to get a true measure of how much he's had. Uh, Don't you get that? No, I want you to stay in the car. That's all right. I want you to stay in the car. All right. Yeah. That's true, too. Unfortunately, her breathalyzer isn't playing ball, so she'll have to sit tight till a backup unit can drop one off. Just so you know, I've got a police dog in the car. I've got a police dog in the car. Yeah, all right. Right. So just don't do out daft. Are you following me? Are you following me? Communication issues aside, the man's licensed and fully insured, but his behaviour's raising eyebrows. What have you took out of there? Keys? What keys? What keys are they? What have you took them out for? Cos, um, that's my hotel. Oh, you're at a hotel, are you? Yeah. Right. Why are you at a hotel if you live in Nottingham? Um, me and the wife. Yeah. Fell out. How much have you actually had to drink? Go how much I'm, you... Cos you stink, um, you stink I'll be honest with you, I've had about four pints. Thank you. You're going to be over? You've been done for drink driving before? Yeah. Have you? The man's backstory offers an explanation, but not an excuse. So why yeah. have you got in the van tonight? Well, tell me, give me a reason. Give me a reason why, cos you were all over the road. You know if someone happened to be walking on the pavement? 
Hey, I've got, I've got no excuse, officer. Jump out for us, mate. Jump out. The driver knows he's in the wrong, and he knows what's coming, but he should still watch his step. Well, watch it. <laughs> yeah. That's it. You all right? Jesus. Just hold on to the back of the van. We don't want you falling over and cracking your head open. All right. Those pesky curbs can be a real nuisance. Thankfully, the backup unit has now arrived with a fully functioning breathalyzer. So, deep breath for me and one long, steady breath like you burn up a balloon, OK? Yeah, ready? Deep breath and go. A lungful from this chap will surely be a surprise to no one. So, it's 92, which is a fail, OK, cos the legal limit is 35. Mm. He's getting on for three times the legal limit. A dangerous amount of booze in anyone's book. I'm arresting you for drink driving, basically. You do not have to say anything may harm your defence. You do not mention when questioned something which you later will line in court. The only question now is, has any of it sunk in? Do you understand everything that's happening? You've been nicked before, so you, know, you understand how it works. To get the most accurate reading, the man will be put on the intoxilizer at the police station. I'm going to go and park this. Jen's job now is to find a safe place to stash his pride and joy. Oh, man, it stinks. The van will be recovered soon. As for the driver's recovery, that could take a fair bit longer. He's clearly been to the pub all night, three times over the limit. We don't do it, so why should he think he can do it? I do have empathy for people that have got personal problems, but it's just not an excuse, cos we have to pick up the pieces when they run someone over or they run into a member of the public and destroy other people's lives because he basically can't be asked to get a taxi home. At least we've got him off the road and he'll have a bed for the night. He's done it before. Whether he's going to learn on this occasion, I don't know. Back at the police station, the man blew even higher, hitting 95 on the intoxilizer. He pleaded guilty in court, received almost a thousand pounds in fines, and was disqualified from driving for 23 months. Still to come. It's not safe. It's been recovered. Clarkie and Phil dish out some life lessons. I'm not having a group of lads stood on a bank when there's a potential that there's likely to be an accident and someone getting injured, right? In the UK, around two-thirds of young drivers have no breakdown cover. But be warned, if the boys and girls in blue have to help you with your blowout, it can be a costly mistake. Interceptors Phil Broughton and Andy Clarkie Clark have five decades of experience between them patrolling the county's roads. So we want to go. Hang on. Back. Hang on. Try never go. Da, 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 da. And the A46 on a Sunday afternoon always provides a fertile hunting ground. Oscar Tango 2 1 with State 6 on the 46 northbound with his broken down vehicle. A BMW was blown a tyre on the busy dual carriageway. Thankfully, both driver and passengers are reported to be safe. But the fellas will need to get the Beamer off the road sharpish. It's obviously a main arterial route up the A46, and it's, where are we now? It's quarter past three. Uh, you know, it won't be that much longer before it starts getting darker. It's clouded anyway, so what we'll do is we'll put a uh, closure on the lane and, uh, and then we'll see what they've got sorted out in terms of recovery. And uh, if not, we'll get, we'll get the police recovery to come out, so we're not waiting. It's not long before they spot the stricken motor up ahead. I'll stick it here and then we'll put cones out. Yeah, mate. Music lover Clarkie's been on the force since the mid 90s, back when Brit Pop was king and Oasis were top of the pops. Some might say that traffic management is the new rock and roll. I'll give you a dig, Phil, we'll get them out first. It turns out the BMW was travelling in convoy with a Fiesta which explains the large group of people on the verge. But Phil's only got eyes for the driver. You know, and it popped. 
Where were you? I've just, I've just missed the lane, right? Yeah. Started to go off something. We're not driving on that anyway, because oh, no, yeah, no, yeah. yeah. We're gonna jack it up and just No, we're not, we're not doing that at side of the road. Right. Changing a tire on a fast road like this is not a particularly smart idea. Phil's got a much better one. Right, and unfortunately we're gonna have to get recovery out to it, because obviously it's on motor carriage right. The beam has been taken away, but this lot won't be walking home. Have you really got slippers on? Yeah, mate, I'll uh, swim in the car. Uh, okay. <laughs> the footwear's not ideal. Plus, after a weekend partying in Nottingham, they were just beginning the long drive home to Norfolk. We were just driving, and then I felt, felt something, and I thought, mm, that's not right. And then you felt the tyre going diff, 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 and I said, yeah, I had a blowout. That was the first one. To make matters worse, the lad's got no roadside breakdown cover, so the cost of the recovery will come out of his own pocket. It's going to cost so much money, mate. Do, do you know a rough idea? About 200 quid. Can you follow me? Can I right. get it off the road? Right, no, you can't. It's not safe. It's been recovered. Do we not rip the tyre off? The lads are pushing their luck, but Clark is having none of it. The recovery truck's already on its way, together with a big, fat bill. So, at the moment, the driver's pretty upset that it's been recovered. Because that's going to cost him about two hundred pounds, you know, and he's uh, a little bit disgruntled at that. But the point being is, you've seen the road, you've seen how busy it is, uh, and how unsafe it is for this car to be here like this. We're certainly not going to drive it with a flat tire and you know scrape rims on the carriageway because that's not safe to do either. It's going to put other road users at risk. So the reality is, we'll get it to a place of safety, and then he's going to have to work out what he does with it from there. I'm afraid. Hey, up! Can I shoot you jump in this car? We're going to get you off, off the road. Thank you. While two of the group are ushered safely away... Use this lane. There we go. So we straight out into the fast lane. Cool. The driver finally appears to have accepted his fate. Can you not escort us up the road? His mates, however, are refusing to let it lie. Charge 150 quid. That's quite steep. Right. Well, we don't charge it. We, yeah, I know right. the company who's Just, doing this, that. It's going to drop dark soon. Yeah. It's a dual carriageway. Yeah. There is no hard yeah. shoulder yeah. and there's no lights. Okay. So what do you think's likely to happen? I'm not having a group of lads stood on a bank where there's a potential that there's likely to be an accident and someone going injured. Yeah. Right? A few firm words from PC Broughton will usually do the trick. Well, there's not been the field, so I don't care. All right. Right on cue the source of all the friction finally shows up. Unfortunately, its driver has got some unwelcome news. Obviously, there's nobody in the office to sort out payments or anything. We'll probably be released today. Because it's a Sunday, the paperwork for the tow can't be processed until tomorrow morning at the earliest. You know, I've got to get it sorted. I've got to get home back to Yeah. Uh, like, what so we do, we need the car, basically. Uh, you can't not take my car. Oh, I've got to right, go. listen, uh, listen, mate, listen, mate, no. listen, relax. Your car has got to get off the roadway, which it is doing, yeah. and it's going to the garage with the recovery firm. I understand your frustration, but this is a matter of safety, not a matter of we're being funny with no, you. No, or Right, it's no, as no, simple no. as that. Clarky won't budge. So you get lads need to get back to the uh, But having overheard their plight, the recovery driver has made a few calls and appears to have come up with a solution. The recovery agent's going to take them off the A46. He's going to end up paying for the recovery. He's going to allow them to sort the vehicle out and then obviously go, go off home. Where, where am I going? Uh, like the Lord Ted pub. The lads and the beamer are being dropped off at a nearby pub where they can replace the tyre themselves before heading back to Norfolk. Cheers, guys. Thank Get some recovery cover. You tell them, Clarky. I get that he was frustrated and it was going to cost him a reasonable amount of money and he was going to be stuck a long way from home. But it was a classic case, really, of poor planning because if you're going to drive a car and you're going to travel wide and far, then you need to make sure that you've got some means of getting home if that vehicle breaks down. All told, he's had very good service and needs to stop moaning. All smiles at the end, that's the main thing, isn't it?
Catch more police interceptors new next Monday at 8. Investigating the mystery of a missing plane, Archie Punjabi stars in Drama Departure, available to watch now on My5. And tonight, with exclusive access inside a detention regime like no other, brand new court martial soldiers behind bars is next.